All right, as we get started here in just a moment, we're going to take our quiz over those memorized rational roots. You're going to need two clean sheets of paper. You will need a pencil, and uh, that is all. So two clean sheets of paper and a pencil is all you will need, but I will give you about a minute or so to uh, continue studying over those, and then the cheat sheet goes away indefinitely. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no calculators. I thought we were allowed to use calculators. Something. Unless I specify not, and I just specified not. So I did specify that I would specify. <laughs> well, I'd already specified by saying two clean sheets of paper and a pencil is all you would have out. So that <clears throat> excluded the presence of a calculator on the desk. <clears throat> but we're just wasting your study time now. And Brecken and Gavin are laughing at you. <laughs> Abby started to laugh and realized it wasn't funny after all. <laughs> <laughs> so no, she's just quite terrifying. Anything. You're just laughing at Gavin? No. Right. <laughs> no. These roots are hilarious. You have no idea. <laughs> If you understood how her mind works, they, they would be, they're funny, they're funny. I, I understand you, Abby. I, I get tickled every time I look at them. <laughs> You're trying to fake it, Michael. It's not the same. All right, desk cleared of cheat sheets, desk cleared of everything except for two clean, unwritten upon sheets of paper and one pencil. Two clean sheets of paper and a pencil. If you're watching on YouTube, you only actually, well, assuming you're watching at home, if you're watching in a classroom and this is a substitute teacher proctoring this, you need two clean sheets of paper. Anyway, if you're at home, one clean sheet of paper because you don't need a cover sheet. But everyone else in here, I don't trust you. So two clean sheets of paper, one's for a cover sheet, and on the other top of the page, first and last name, along with today's date, and uh, today is 9-21-21. 9-21-21, and for the assignment, you can put Rational Roots Quiz 1. <laughs> Rational Roots Quiz 1. But we won't put of how many. We'll just put Rational Roots Quiz 1. I want you to number down 1 through 16. Number down 1 through 16. I will dictate 16 problems to you. You write the answers. Now, YouTube viewers, usually if you want a little extra time for a quiz, that's all cool. This quiz, it's not cool. So this quiz, no pausing, no rewinding. Hey, don't know added advantages over what the rest of the class has. I'll leave it on your honor system. Remember, I cannot see you, but God can. And you don't want God to get you. Those in the classroom, I will get you. You don't want me to get you either. But it's not quite as terrifying as God getting you. All right, so number down 1 through 16. I will dictate to you a root. I will say it twice. All you have to do is write the answer. Now, if you want to copy the problem onto your own paper, you're certainly welcome to do so, but you do not have to. All you have to do is write the answer to each of these roots. All right, here we go, beginning with number one. Make sure you have your cover sheets ready. Number one, what is the cube root of 216? What is the cube root of 216? Number two. What is the square root of 324? What is the square root of 324? Number three. What is the fourth root of 256? What is the fourth root of 256? Number four. What is the square root of 196? What is the square root of 196? Number five, what is the cube root of 729? What is the cube root of 729? Number six, the square root of 289. The square root of 289. Number seven, the square root of 169. Number seven, the square root of 169. Number eight, the fifth root of 32. The fifth root of 32. Number nine, the fourth root of 81. 
the fourth root of 81. Number 10, the square root of 361. The square root of 361. Number 11, the cube root of 125. The cube root of 125. Number 12, the square root of 225. The square root of 225. Number 13, the fourth root of 625. The fourth root of 625. Number 14, the cube root of 512. The cube root of 512. Number 15, the fifth root of 243. The fifth root of 243. And number 16, the square root of 256. The square root of 256. All right, pencils down. And if you would pass those to the front, pass those to the front. I would plan for another quiz tomorrow. Now that you have an idea of how the quizzes will work, I'm going to modify it slightly. And the quiz that you'll take tomorrow over these, some of them will be just exactly like what I did. And for some of them, I might give you something like this. 13 is the square root of... 13 is the square root of... 169. 169. Oh. 5 is the fourth root of... 625. 625. So you'll get some like that on the quiz tomorrow. So we'll take another quiz. It'll be a little bit of a mixture on that second quiz. For now, go ahead and take your homework handouts out. Homework handouts out. Good, so Michael's got these mastered. The rest of you looked blank on some of those. All right, we'll see how tomorrow's quiz goes. All right, anyone feel like, I'm pretty sure I do every one of those. I think I got 100. All right, a couple hundreds. Good job, you too. Okay, how about, I probably got an A or a B. I think I might have missed a few in there, but I think I did pretty well. I'm going to say I failed. Okay, well, study hard tonight so tomorrow we don't fail. And that'll be good. Uh, take the homework handout out that you had last night. You did the odd numbered problems on this handout. The odd numbered problems on the handout. In fact, hold the handouts up so that I can see that you did the odd numbered problems. Oh, I have to actually look at your spiral. Well, thank you, the rest of you, putting them directly on the handout and being lazy. Genesis is hardworking and industrious. Unfortunately, it makes it harder for you to check. Good job, Genesis. All right. <laughs> Let's take a look at these together. Numero uno. What did you get when you were used to the square root of 20 -0? Uh Kendall. Two times the square root. Two times the square root of five is correct. Number three, Matty. Square root of 32 becomes? Four times the square root of two. Number five, the cube root of 108 becomes? Michael? Three times the cube root of four. Three times the cube root of four. Number seven, Genesis. The fourth root of 162? Three times the fourth root of two. Number nine, the square root of 72, A cubed. Introducing a letter into the mix here. Uh, Abby? 6A times the square root of 2A. 6A times the square root of 2A. Number 11, Brandon? 8C times the square root of 2C. Good. The square root of 120 AC cubed becomes 8C times the square root of 2C. Number 13, we have the odd root of a negative, a fifth root of negative 486. Audrey, what was your answer? Negative 3 times the fifth root of 2. Good. When we take the fifth root of a negative, we get a negative, and then we'll factor into the, uh, what is that, 243 times 2, so you get negative 3 times the fifth root of 2. Great job, Audrey. Number 5, a lot of letters in the mix here. Maddie? I'm sorry. Oh, 15? Hmm? 7, 8, 8, 8, 7ab squared times the square root of 2ac. I'm going to pause there on those first, uh, let's see, eight problems. I'm going to go at eight for eight. Got them all. All right, seven for eight, just missed one. Are there any questions on the ones we missed? Let's take a look at number 17 now. And Kendall, we see a couple of things here that are a little bit different. First of all, uh, I noticed we've got a y to the negative fourth power. 
Hmm, that's a little bit different. Um, we know that negative exponent means um, reciprocal. reciprocal. So a negative fourth power, y to the negative fourth could simply Right, I could just move this down and put it over y to the fourth. They didn't have to. You could have just worked with the negative exponent, frankly. But man, I hate negative exponents. They just look obnoxious. The other thing we see, uh, Kendall, is this one-half power. But we know that a one-half power is just another way of writing. Square root. So really, it's just the square root of all of this. Now, the good news is I can take the square root of the denominator. Square root of y to the fourth just becomes y squared. And in fact, I can take the square root of a to the sixth very easily. Um, a cubed. So as far as the letters go, that's the easy part. Let me 245. Of course, we had to factor it like we did on the previous problems. How did you factor your 245? I don't think I wrote that down. All right. Anyone help her? 49 and 5. So hopefully, Kendall, you pulled out a 7 and left the square root of 5. Did you have that? So there, you knew the 49. You didn't write it didn't all in your head because you're that smart. And then we could have had this answer, or 7a cubed y to the negative second times the square root of 5. Either answer is correct. How many got one of those on number 17? Questions on 17. I just hate negative exponents, so that's why I like that one better. But, you know, whatever. Uh, number 19, we have the cube root of a polynomial. And I said any time we got a polynomial radicand, Genesis, we're going to have to we're going to have to factor the polynomial. And how did you factor the 8x negative 24? There we go. Factor to 8 times x negative 3. And the goal is to take the cube root of one of these two factors. And in this case, we can take the cube root of the to get and we'll leave the in the radicand to get 2 times the cube root of x negative 3 with or without parentheses at this point. How many of this answer are number 19? Any questions on that one? Number 21, we have a one-third power, Michael. We know the one-third power just means? Uh, the cube square root. Cube root. Cube root. So really, this is the cube root of 27c to the 6th, negative 27c cubed. And once again, it's a polynomial, so we have to factor it. And how did you factor it? I pulled out a 27c cubed. And it left you within parentheses. c cubed minus 1. And of course, we could take the cube root of the? 27. And of the? c. c cubed yeah. to get? 3c. 3c. But I can't take the cube root of c cubed negative 1 to the first power. So let's leave that, but it begs the question. Is not c cubed negative 1 the same thing as c cubed negative 1 cubed class? So isn't that just the same as c negative 1 cubed? No. Some are difference of cubes factors into what class? Binomial, trinomial, not binomial cubed. Don't fall into the trap of saying, oh, that's c negative 1 quantity cubed. I can pull out a c negative 1 as well. No. It's, it would factor into a binomial trinomial, which you can't take a cube root of either of those. So we only need to just like this. But some students have that misconception. How many recognize this is as far as we can take it? Anyone try to go further with the c cubed negative 1? All right. Questions on that? I've seen that in the past, so I wanted to address it here. Uh, number 23, uh, we've got the square root of all that stuff. And um, uh, Abby, what do we need to do with all that stuff? Just factor out the 5. Factor out the 5 to get? x squared negative 2xy plus y squared. Uh, couldn't we factor this further, though? Yeah. Yeah, and this factored further if we wanted it to, but a binomial trinomial, you couldn't take the cube root of either, right? So there was no reason to factor them further. What would this factor into? Not binomial trinomial, but? Binomial squared. Oh, and I could take the square root of a binomial squared. So here it helps to factor further. So do you have to factor completely? Not if it doesn't help. But in this case, it does help with the binomial squared, because we take the square root of the binomial squared to get? Uh, quantity x minus y times square root of 5. Good, and I like that she said the quantity x minus y times the square root of 5, not x minus y times the square root of 5, because without the parentheses, it would mean the square root of 5 is only multiplied by the y, and it's not. It's multiplied by the entire quantity. How many have the same answer Maddie had on number 23? All right. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> Abby. How many have the same answer Abby had? And people on, on YouTube are like, that didn't sound like Maddie's voice. <laughs> no, it didn't. All right, questions. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm commenting on questions on 23. <laughs> 
All right, uh, let's take a look at the bottom section now. And this, the third way of reducing radicals that we had talked about yesterday was uh, to make the index as small as we could get it. And the key to making the index smaller is to cancel little numbers, meaning the index and exponents. Find something in those little numbers that can cancel. But as you look at number one, a four is the little number index. And technically, right now in the class, the exponent is a one. Nothing cancels. So the other key is with numeric values to rewrite the radicand. Notice the alliteration. Uh, to rewrite the radicand as a power. And in fact, Brandon, number one, we could rewrite the 49 as. So now instead of the 4 through to 49 to the first, writing it as 49 or the 4 through to 7 squared, now I can cancel with these little numbers to get square root of 7 to the first, or we could just say the square root of 7. Similarly, on number 3, Audrey, we'll rewrite the 100 as... How did I miss that? Uh, all the odd problems... That's the whole reason I gave you a different handout. <laughs> I'll take the homework pass. You saw me go for the green slip. You're like, I got homework pass. Wait, stop. Don't carry the green slip. Oh, you got two. All right. So you're ready for another one of these. I'll give you another handout tonight. <laughs> but I would recommend working on the new handout. All right. Um, anyway. So number three. We're going to pretend Audrey did her homework. Um, and Audrey would have rewritten the 100 as... Something to a power? Mm -hmm. Maybe something squared? Mm -hmm. Maybe 50 squared? Well, that'd be 2,500. Um, Maddie? 10 squared. 10 squared. <laughs> so I was trying to get through you before, Maddie. This is why I stayed with you. And then we get to 10 squared anyway. All right, so 10 squared. And uh, so if you write it as 10 squared, then the fourth root and the square power can cancel to give me? Square root of 10. Very good. The square root of 10 with a short E sound. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Number five. We now go to Maddie. And uh, Maddie, we need to rewrite the 625 as? You could write it as 25 squared. Perhaps that's the best way to write it, um, considering what's coming. Or if you were just going off those memorized rational roots, you might have written it as 5 to the 4th. And have the sixth root of that. Either way, what can come out of index and exponent class? Two. A two. This way would cancel to give me a three and one. So, Maddie, the answer you got was Q root 25. Had you done it this way, you would have canceled six and four class to get three and two, which would still have given you the cube root of five squared, which is 25. So either way you worked it, should have gotten the cube root of 25. How many got all three correct? One, three, five. Got all three of the first ones correct. All right, questions on those first three, from those who did or did not do them. All right, questions on that. It's okay, she had homework pass. She's strategic. Her sister used all three of her homework passes from the beginning of the year in my class. Now, I'm not bitter or holding grudges or anything like that. Anyway, um, let's take a look at number seven, where we have letters. And again, the key is all the exponents have to be able to cancel with the index, not just a couple of them. You can't pick and choose. It's either all or nothing. So in number seven, uh, we want to rewrite that 25, Kendall, as 5 squared, and I've got an a to the fourth, and I've got a b squared. And what can come out of 6, 2, 4, and 2? 2. And when I take it all out, it gives me what? Good. And there's our answer, the cube root of 5a squared b. We should perhaps check and see if we could reduce any more, right? We saw that yesterday. But we can't, so we're done. Uh, number 9, we've got the sixth root of, how should I rewrite 1,000 Genesis? 10 cubed. And of course, we also have the a cubed. And when we knock something out of the 6, 3, and 3, what do we get? Ooh, careful. When I take a 3 out of everything, I get 1 and 1, because 3 divided by 3 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So it should have been the square root of 10a as opposed to the cube root of 10a. Number 11, we have the ninth root of, how do I rewrite the 125, Abby? Um, 5 cubed. 5 cubed. And of course, we have the x to the 6th and the z cubed. And what can come out of the index and all the exponents? To get? 
cubed root of 5x squared z. Okay, the cube root of 5x squared z. Uh, how many perfect 6 for 6 on the entire bottom section? Are any questions on this lower section here? Any questions? Questions at all in reducing radicals? Let's do numbers 10 and 12 very quickly. 10 and 12 there at the bottom of the handout that I gave you last night. <laughs> It's kind of fun. I don't get to pick on Audrey very much. There we go. It's like the time Abby forgot to help him clean up at lunch. It's like, yes, here we go. Like Maddie's always good for tan, and Kendall, I've got short jokes, and Brandon's just Brandon. <laughs> you other four, I gotta, I gotta find my chances where I can get them. Do I pick on you about anything, Janice? It's gotta be something. And Michael, it's quizzes, you know. <laughs> I am an equal opportunity picker. I pick on everybody. <laughs> Nobody sees her on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, number 10, what comes out of the index and all the exponents? Good. 2. And when I take out the 2, what do I get initially? Um, cube root of a squared, b, x squared, y, etc. Perfect, but why don't I leave my answer that way? Because you can take out a y. Right, 3 goes into 4 Points. with... So my final answer should be y times... Um, a squared, b, x squared, y. There we go. Times a cube root of a squared, bx squared, of y. One y out, one y left in. How many got the final answer on 10? How many stops too soon? Okay. Uh, let's take a look at number 12. And on number 12, we need to start by rewriting the 144, Maddie, as 12 squared. <laughs> you only did that for me, though. You don't normally say it like that, do you? I don't think so. Anyway. All right. Um, so then it's just like, yeah. <laughs> then we need to cancel some stuff. Uh, Audrey? Did you say B squared C? Yeah, I okay. okay, yeah, the square root of 12, A, B squared C, right? Cancel so we get 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. But we're not done, Brandon, because 2 goes into 2, 1 times, so I can take out a B to get B times the square root of 12, A, C. But I'm still not done, Genesis, because... We can factor the 12 into 4 times 3. We're out of the 4, we pull out a 2. So our final answer should be, back to Genesis. There we go. 2b times the square root of 3ac. How many took it all the way to completion? How many stopped way too soon? How many stopped a little bit too soon? All right, questions on this. Questions on this. I will right, we'll practice a little bit more with reducing radicals in your homework this evening, as well as our next topic in your notes, adding radicals. Next section in your notes, adding radicals. Adding radicals. First thing you need to get in your notes is that you can only add similar radicals. You can only add similar radicals radicals. Just as you can only add like terms in algebra, you can only add similar radicals or like radicals together. Um, what do we mean by similar? A couple requirements for radicals to be similar. First of all, they must have the same index. A square root will never be like or similar to a cube root. A fifth root never similar to a fourth root. Square roots may be similar, cube roots may be similar, as long as they have that same index. But another thing they must also have is the same radicand. The same radicand. So for instance, a square root of 5 would not be similar to a square root of 7. A square root of 5 would only be similar to a square root of 5. 
And then you might be thinking, well, Mr. Jasky, all radical signs look the same. So if the three parts to a radical are the index, the radicand, and the radical sign, and after the same index, in other words, they must be exactly identical? Well, they might have different coefficients. Okay, they might have different coefficients. So the numbers that are in front of them may be different. So for instance, a uh, 5 square root of 2 and a 7 square root of 2. Okay, they're both square roots of 2, right? They're both the same index square roots, both same radicand 2, but the coefficients may be different. Well, that's how we'll add them together. In fact, we'll simply add the coefficients together, just as we would with 5x plus 7x is 12x. So 5 times the square root of 2 plus 7 times the square root of 2 class would equal... 12 times the square root of 2. Just as we didn't mess with the letters as we added like terms, so with like radicals, we won't actually mess with the radical portion. We'll just keep it the same. If I had 3 times the cube root of 7 minus 7 times the cube root of 7, well, here again, we'll add that we're adding unlike signs, right? Positive and negative. We're going to subtract, keep the sign of the greater. What would we get for our answer here, class? Negative 4 times the cube root of 7. You have 3 cube roots of 7, take away 7, you now have negative 4 cube roots of 7. But if I tried to add, for instance, 5 times the square root of 2 plus 7 times the cube root of 2, what would I get for my answer? That, <laughs> right? Or if I tried to subtract, you know, 3 times the cube root of 7 minus 7 times the cube root of 5. That you can't do anything with it. Okay, I've seen students who try to be like negative four times the cube root of two. Leave the radical alone, right? The radical just is along for the right. It's all about the coefficients when you're adding terms together. So write this problem in your notes. If we had six times the cube root of four plus two times the cube root of four minus five times the cube root of four. Well, first of all, they are all like radicals, aren't they? Because they have the same index and the same radicand. So all I got to do is combine the coefficients. 6, 2, and negative 5 class. 3, and then we keep the same radical. Cube root of 4. So 3 times the cube root of 4, our answer. How many remember this from Algebra 1? Anyone say, I've totally forgotten this ever existed. All right, purged it from your memory, did you? All right, now you might remember, those of you who remember back to Algebra 1, might remember that you never had problems like this. Uh, because they're way too easy. And I wouldn't want to insult your intelligence that way. So you would get problems like this. 7 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 48. And initially, if I were asking a young child, having showed them this, they would say, you can't do that. But you can do that. Step number one, though, would be, write this down, to reduce all radicals completely. Reduce all radicals completely. You don't know which radicals are similar or not if they are not reduced. So we can't add that the way it's written, no, but 48 has a square in it. What square? 16 times 3. Where I can take the square root of the 16, and instead of the square root of 48 class, I could write this radical as, and now I can add them easily enough, 11 times the square root of 3. So step one, of course, is to reduce. Step number two, combine coefficients. And step number three, leave the radical alone. Don't go messing with them trying to make it like a square root of 6 or anything crazy like that. Just leave it as a square root of 3. How many remember this? So in a sense, we're moving off of reducing radicals, but uh, every single problem we work, we're going to be reducing radicals just to work the problem. So reducing radicals is not so much an end unto itself as it is a means of accomplishing a greater end, and that is the adding of the radicals together. So let's take a look at another one. <clears throat> Write this one down, the square root of 50 minus the square root of 2. Do not... Oh, square root of 48. No, 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 no. You can't subtract them the way you're written. What do we have to do? First class, reduce, which involves factor, right? How do we factor the 50? 25 times 2. By the way, this 3 gives you a little hint of one of the factors. Because you really couldn't add them if it didn't have a 3 left over, right? 
This too gives us a little hint about one of the factors. Not that you needed the hint, especially on 50. I mean, 25 times 2 should be pretty obvious, but you know, hey, it's there, right? Where would we take the square root of the 25 class to get? 5 times the square root of 2. And now that it's a square root of 2, we can subtract a square root of 2 from 5 square root of 2 to get? 4 times the square root of 2. Some students have fallen into the trap to say 5 minus nothing is 5. So 5 squared of 2. Careful, that's not nothing. What is this understood coefficient? A 1. So don't forget that there is a 1 there. All right, this one down. 12 times the square root of 1 third plus the square root of 27. Yeah, I see something I hate, class. I sure hate fractions. They're messy. And we know that we never really are supposed to have a fraction in the radicand, are we, class? We've got to take the root of the denominator. But I can't take the square root of 3, Genesis. So maybe I should uh, change it, right? So instead of a 3 in the bottom, maybe it's a... So we're going to make this 12 times the square root of some number of 9. Since we multiply top and bottom by... So of course it's going to be how many 9s? 3 9s. Strategy tip. Write this in your notes. If you have a coefficient in front of a fractional radical, put the coefficient over 1. I'm now going to make this 12 over 1. And then here, I can't take the square root of 3, but I don't care. That's a numerator anyway. Leave it as a square root of 3. The important thing is I can take the square root of the 9 class to get 3 in the denominator. And the reason I want the 12 over 1 is so you don't miss the fact that this is a denominator rational 3, and this, of course, is a rational 12 in front, and they're being multiplied. Well, we just talked about fractions not long ago. You know we can cancel numerators and denominators. Let's cancel the 12 and 3 to get, and of course, 1, right? 4 and 1. So we end up with this whole thing just becomes 4 times the square root of 3. But again, to make sure you don't forget to cancel, I put the 12 over 1, and then look for canceling. Will it always be there? No. If this were like the square root of a fifth or something, I put the square root of 5 over 5. 5 and 12 wouldn't cancel, right? But a lot of times, things will cancel, and you're able to reduce. Well, now for the easy one. 27, there's no fraction there. I just got to factor it up. Um, uh, oh, tell me if you're watching, you get a life. Um, he just graduated last year. Brandon, how do we factor the 27? Nine and, Nine and three, where of course we can take the square root of the, to get. And so this comes, I'm just gonna move it all the way down here as three times the square root of three, and now we can add it easily enough, class. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Seven times the square root of three, our answer. So whether it's the factoring, which happens most of the time, or even if there's a fraction, do we see how to you know, work with it? We know how to reduce it, but again, I recommend over one so you can do a little canceling there. Let's take a look at another one. We'll write this one down. The fourth root of 49 plus the square root of 63 minus 2 times the square root of 28. One of these is not like the other. Which of these is just weird, class? The fourth root. The fourth root, yeah. Everything else is a square root. And I know to add them, class, they have to be what kind of radicals? Similar, Similar radicals, which means, class, they have the... Same. Same. Right, and none of them got the same radicand, but I mean, this one don't even got the same index. I'd start there, then. Let's make the index smaller by rewriting the 49, Kendall, as... 7 squared, so I can cancel away here and get um, the square root of 7. Now, this isn't a dead giveaway, especially in Algebra 2. There's a lot of chances things could be weird in Algebra 2. But if this is a square root of 7, the only way it's going to combine with something is if one of these or both of these also is a square root of 7. seven. So I kind of start along those zones like, well, let's just see. Does 7 go into 63, class? Yes. Yeah, how many times? Hey, that's a rational root. I can take the square root of 9, class. Three. Three times the square root of 7. Now, if you're like, does 7 go in? No. Well, that just means this one isn't going to add in or combine to the rest of them. Make sense? How about this one? Does 28 uh, have a 7 in it? Yes. 7 times? Four. Hey, that's rational. I can take the square root of 4, class, to get. Two. But there's already a negative 2 here. So this 
would be 2 times the square root of 7, but there's a negative 2 being multiplied by the 2 square root of 7 class to get negative 4, negative four times the square root of 7. Does that make sense? Don't lose existing coefficients. And now we just combine. 1 square root of 7, <clears throat> good enough, 1. Uh, plus 3 square root of 7 minus 4 square root of 7 class? 6. 0 times the square root of 7. Because 1 plus 3 is 4, minus 4 is 0. Or we could just say class 0. Because anything times 0 is 0. Questions on this one? All right, if we didn't remember it before, Remy, if you're like, okay, yeah, I think I remember it now. I got this now. Okay. Questions on any of this? In your textbooks, page 54, I want you to do numbers 11 through 14. Page 54, I want you to do numbers 11 through 14. I went to each had a suggestion box at the main desk. You know, you drop your suggestions in. We used to joke the suggestion box was the bottomless box that sat right over the shredder. Yeah. We petitioned for a soccer team so many times. Yeah. I never actually get a soccer team going here, though. Well, you put in a petition. <laughs> Our dog was really hey, one thing in your favor, you don't have to compete against basketball. That was the thing we kept running into was we wouldn't have enough people who's already playing basketball. But no basketball this year, so soccer team here we go. What Brecken be goalie? <laughs> Scott Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> For those who have been in my PE class. and he stopped all, he blocked all five kicks with his face. Not intentionally, it just happened that way. It's really funny. I could hear the thundering of the stairs and steps above me the other day. We finally found out who that was. <clears throat> this is Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing it to the, she was trying to get me to look at the clock. I'm like, I knew what time it was. I'm busy recording. I gotta get it done. So anyway, I was telling my wife about it. We went back and we watched the end of the video. I'm gonna kill that kid. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mrs. Morrison. I didn't kill her just for the record. Um, so she is she's alive and well. All right, number eleven. <laughs> Number 11. 
Yeah. Gavin's like, I was wondering how that saga ended. There you go. See, now you know the rest of the story. The other two don't even know what that means. All right, number 11. Kendall, what did you get when you added 8 squared to 5 plus 7 squared to 5? Did you feel your intelligence being insulted when you worked that way? Yeah, I know, I know. You're like, I'm an algebra two. Give me something better than that. Number 12 is at least not insulting. It's easy, but not insulting. We had to reduce the tw square root of 12, Maddie, into four times the square root of, or, well, four times three factored it, and then reduced it down to, good, two times the square root of three. The 27 reduces all the way down to, and then we add the two square root of three and three square root of three to get five times the square root of three. Uh, number 13, uh, we had the cube root of 16, cube root of 2,000. Of course, the cube root of 16, we could factor um, Aubrey. Aubrey. I'm starting with names. Hi, Abby, Maddie, and Audrey. Audrey, number six, uh, the 16 factors into, so it reduces down to, good, two times the cube root of two, and then the 2,000 factors into, two times a thousand, where we reduce that down to, Good, 10 times the cube root of 2, and then we'll add the 10 times the cube root of 2 and the 2 times the cube root of 2 to get 12 times the cube root of 2. 12 times the cube root of 2. And number 14, uh, the 24 factors into, Brandon, 6 and 4, six and four where we reduce it down to 2 times the square root of 6. Good, 2 squared to 6. Then the 54 factors into, six. right, reduces down to 3 times the square root of 6. 2 times the square root of 6 plus 3 times the square root of 6 gives us? Five times the square root of six. How many got 11, 12, 13, 14? All correct. How many got three out of four correct? Mm -hmm. Two out of four? Oh. Any of them right? I got two out of three correct. Two out of three correct, okay. Um, question on the one that you missed. No. You understand it now? No, but I'm sure. <laughs> I see where I went wrong, so yeah, actually. Okay, all right. Number 15. <laughs> Number 15, let's take a look at this one. This one's kind of weird. Um, we look at the cube root of 54, and obviously I can't take the cube root of 54. We can factor that 54, Michael, into? Nine and six. Well, if it were a square root, absolutely, because I can take the square root of nine, but I can't take the cube root of nine. So nine and six, no. Let's think to our cubes. 27. 27 and? Two. two. So I take the 27, cube root of the 27 to get three. And we'll leave the cube root of the two. Now let's address the letters. I've got an M to the sixth and a Q to the ninth. When I reduce those down, what do I get? M squared, Q cubed. M squared, nothing left. Q cubed, nothing left. So this whole thing becomes the three M squared Q cubed times the cube root of two. That's hard to say fast. And then I've also got a negative cube root of 16. Time, uh, R to the ninth, Z to the twelfth. Well, again, I've got to factor the sixteen Genesis into. I mean, if it were square root, I just take it and get four, right? But it's just cube root, so factor it into two and a. Take the cube root of the to get two. So we got a negative two. We'll leave the other two inside the radical, and then with the letters. Well, when you take the root of a power, you divide the exponent by the index. So 9 divided by 3, 3, because 3 goes into 9 3 times, and then with, again, nothing left in. Now, notice, class, these are not like terms. The letters do not match, but they are like radicals. Moving it again. Do you see that? They're similar radicals. But they're not like terms. So do they completely combine? No. So here's a tip for you. Write this down. If you have like radicals but not like terms, factor out the like radical. And that's the best we can do is say, well, they both at least have a cube root of 2. I'll factor out the cube root of 2, and we'll leave behind the 3m squared q cubed minus 2r cubed z to the 4. And that's the closest you can do with adding them. You're not really adding them, but... You can always factor out the common radical, the like radical that's here. Questions on 15? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, if you, have, if you have similar radicals, but not like terms, like the radicals match, but the letters don't, which again, this is only going to be an issue if there's letters, right? It's the fact the letters, the presence of the letters is what messed everything up. It's like, 
Everyone's like, you know, Brandon's not in here. You're like, oh, shut the door, shut the door. You know, it's like when Brandon walks in. Well, the, the letters are like, <laughs> the letters are like Brandon. And so they just kind of mess the problem up. <laughs> we can still get, <laughs> it's like, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> and uh, so we factor out. So if, the, if you have similar radicals, but not like terms, factor out the radical. Work on 16 entry seats. So work on 16 entry seats. <laughs> They don't really hate you, Brandon. They just like picking on you. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know where they get the idea that it's okay to pick on you even. I... <laughs> but it does make class awfully fun for the rest of us, you know? You go home and cry every night. The rest of us have a blast in algebra. <laughs> If you're watching on YouTube and wondering why I am so mean to him, I did ask him if it actually offends him, and he said no. I gave him the opportunity to have me stop, and I would have been willing, and he said, no, it's okay, I don't mind. So per his testimony, <laughs> thoughts on the 4 through to 16 class? Yeah, that's rational. Don't factor if it's rational. That just is two. And then four goes into five once, once with one left. And four goes into 12 three times, three times with nothing left. And then uh, here, four through to maybe one. Three. Yeah, again, that's rational. Don't factor it. It's already a rational root. Uh, four goes into one. Mm, maybe four through to the K. Four goes into 20. Five, five times. And once again... We see dissimilar terms because the letters don't match, but we do see similar radicals. So class just the factor out the radical, the 4 through to k times the 2kv cubed plus 3y to the fifth. Questions on that? All right, so look over across the page now at uh, page 55, and I want you to do numbers 33 and 34. Just a quick review of reducing fractions in the radicand. That is one that can give us some trouble, so I want to make sure we're good to go there. So I'm going to do 33 and 34. Oh, they're on page 55. Abby did them in her head. And let's go to Michael. What'd you get for 33? Uh, square root of 14 over 7. Good. Change it to 14 49. Let's get the square root of 14 over 7. What about number 34, Brandon? Square root of 6 over 4. Good. Change it to 6 16. Let's get the square root of 6 over 4. How many got the same answers? Look at number 35. Um, I've got the square root of 8 minus x over 12 minus 9, but I ain't writing 12 minus 9. Why not? It's, it's just 3. That's what I'm writing. I'm too lazy to write 12 minus 9. And uh, so i got to take the root of the mm -hmm. denominator. Got to take the square root of 3, but you can't. So let's make the 3 into a 9. To make the 3 into a 9 class, I've got to multiply top and bottom by... Three. What does my numerator become? 24 negative 3x. And can I take the square root of 24 negative 3x? Can I factor it? I could factor the 3 back out, but I wouldn't be able to take the root of anything anyway. So I'm going to leave the square root of 24 negative 3x all over a rational 3. There we go. So it looks a little bit weird. Uh, number 36, I got the square root of y minus 3 over 27. Ooh. What if I cancel the 3 and 27 to get 1 and 9? I can take the square root of 9, right? Thoughts? No. You can't, no. Cancel terms. can't cancel terms, only factors. And I can't take the square root of 27. And it doesn't matter that there's a 9 in 27. I have to take the root of the entire number. Hmm. Thoughts? What could 27 become? 
What is a three cubed? But I need to be able to take the square root of it. Cube root doesn't help me. 729. Oh, bless you. <laughs> we could uh, do 27 times 27. I think you get 729. But oh my, there's got to be a better number. Well, there's a 9 in it. What if we multiply top and bottom? I'm sorry? 81. Ah, if we multiply by a 3, we get the square root of 3y minus 9 all over 81. Can I take the square root of 3y minus 9? I could factor it, but even then I couldn't take the root of the factor. So we're going to leave the 3y negative 9 all over 9. And that's a lot better than trying to multiply by 27 and getting a 729. Though I do applaud your effort, but I think you used a calculator, so I'm not quite as impressed, always. But uh, hey, you know, it's laziness. I am impressed with laziness, it's true. All right, if you're watching on YouTube, there is a handout in the description of the video. That is your homework for this evening. Students in here receiving your handouts now. Got a little practice with reducing, got a little practice with adding and subtracting. I plan for an opportunity in the next lesson, not only to demonstrate your superior knowledge of the memorized rational roots again, but also an opportunity to demonstrate your mastery of radical reduction. So maybe a couple opportunities to shine in our next lesson. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You are dismissed. But maybe